Welcome to High Ridge Church Online. Here at High Ridge, we are a family of churches, and our hope is to help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. We have a lot of things going on at High Ridge Church. The best way for you to get the details you need for every event or ministry is on highridgechurch.com or by downloading the High Ridge app from the App Store or Google Play. You can also connect with us on any of our various social media platforms. If you have never joined us at one of our weekend services, we would love to have you. You can find directions and service times for each of our campuses online at highridgechurch.com. We encourage you to lean in with anticipation for what God is going to speak into your life. Thank you for joining us online today. talk to you a little bit about some culture, some high ridge culture, and ways that we reach people. You see it on the worship center, and you might wonder what all this signage is, and they're biblical things. We want people to know God. We want people to find freedom. We want people to discover their purpose, and we want them to make a difference. Now, how do we achieve that? How do we make that happen? We have this thing that we call the growth track. And it's a way for you to gauge where you are at on your, with your relationship with Jesus. And so you can kind of tell, like, hey, where am I at? Obviously, number one is salvation. Number two is baptism. Number three is groups. And so we want you to get in community. And if you're like, hey, this is amazing, then number four is membership. I want to become part of the family permanently. And, and when you go to membership, which we have May 3rd, I'm super excited about it. I cannot wait for all of us. I want you to be a part of it. It's going to be amazing. We'll have you take a spiritual gifts test so you can discover your purpose. And that takes us to five, which is serving. And then six is leadership. And today I'm going to talk to you today about serving. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. For every single person that serves, you make Sundays happen. From the time people walk into the, uh, drive into the parking lot and they're ushered to a parking spot till they come through the door and they feel welcomed to when they take their kids to the kids area and they feel it's a safe place for their kids to be dropped off to the worship team and tech team who's here at 6.45 in the morning while I'm still hitting the snooze button and is here in the morning to get ready to usher you into the presence of God. All of that paves the way for people to be receptive to Jesus. And last week we had 22 people receive Christ. Can we praise the Lord? And every single one of you that serves is as much a part of their story as the person who was up here delivering the message. Because you helped put their heart in a place in a way to receive. And so I'm gonna talk about serving, but real quick, I wanna give a shout out to some people that really helped me and and bless my life. I wanna give a shout out to Huck, who, who has taken off my plate scheduling for our one team and schedules that for me and makes sure everything's good. Kelsey and Tanner, they run our services and make sure that they flow excellently and that everybody feels welcomed. Keenan and Tyrell, uh, they do an amazing job making sure people are able to find their seat and everything goes well there. And then uh, Daniel's an amazing greeter and Diane. And just, I could go on and on and on talking about all the people and just thanking everybody. But from the bottom of my heart and my student ministry team, We can't do it without you. We cannot do it without you. And so the title of my message today is Where Breakthrough Occurs. Where Breakthrough Occurs. Does anybody want breakthrough in their life? Anybody want breakthrough? Am I the only one today? I know I want some breakthrough in my life. And so breakthrough, the definition is this, an act or instance of moving through or beyond an obstacle. And I believe that a lot of times breakthrough happens through faithful people serving. You may not know this about me, but before I got into ministry, I worked for a company that had about 10 group homes for over 60 clients with developmental disabilities Um, ranging from um, autism and Down syndrome and things of that nature. 
And I was responsible long after the doctor and the RN ordered it. I was responsible for every one of those uh, clients. I was responsible for taking them to all their doctor's appointments, scheduling all their doctor's appointments, follow-ups, procedures, hospital visits. And then I was also responsible for making sure that they had every one of their medications and that it was filled and that it was filled on time. And on average, those 60 clients had anywhere between five and 10 medications a piece. And see, that's a lot, but that wasn't even the hard part. I can tell you story after story some funny, some not so funny, where I was hit, clawed, had fecal matter thrown at me. I had somebody pants me in public, and I was like, you know what, that's props to you, bro, good one. Um, and I would over and over again have these different things. And you know what, I never got upset, even when I would come home and talk to my wife that had claw marks or bruises or whatever, because the Lord had given me a heart for that population. It was something supernatural. It was not of myself. In that moment, I was called to that seat that I was in. And through that faithfulness, he prepared me for a ministry in a profound way that I could not explain because he gave me a supernatural patience for people. And if you've heard me long enough, you've heard me say this before, my favorite part about ministry is people. And the worst part of ministry is people. The thing is, when you're in a seat that you're called to, God will give you all the tools you need in your tool belt to perform exactly what he designed you to do. And so my hope today is that you will realize that serving brings breakthrough to you and to others. Let me pray for you. Lord, I just thank you for today. I thank you for all that you do. Lord, I thank you for that are people receiving Christ and being set free in the 22 salvations that happened last week. That was amazing. I pray, Lord, that you would give us a heart to serve. I pray that we would experience breakthrough in a profound way. I pray, Lord, that it wouldn't be just about me anymore that you would give us new perspective, Lord. And I just pray that you would move in this house today and that if anybody doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that they'll come to that saving knowledge today. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so I wanna give you five ways that breakthrough comes through serving. Five ways that breakthrough comes through serving. I want to read to you a scripture out of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. This is a powerful, powerful scripture that Paul is writing to Timothy. And he's encouraging him. And this is an amazing, amazing verse. And we'll come back to it again when we close. But it says this. He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose And grace, this grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, before the foundations of the earth, before you were ever thought of, before your parents, this grace was given to you in Christ Jesus. So the first thing is this, Jesus has saved us, he has called us, he has graced us, and he has purposed us. You may not realize this, but you have a call on your life. And it's not the same call as Pastor Ryan. It's not the same call as Tracy. It's not the same call as any other person in this room. It is unique. It was specifically given to you by God. You were uniquely made to make a difference in people's lives. God designed you to reach that one specific person that no one else could reach. And before the foundations of the earth, he knew you. He called you, he graced you, he saved you, and he purposed you. And you have a purpose. 
Some of you may say, I, I don't have any idea what it looks like or, or what it's supposed to be, but you know that there's more. God has given you a purpose. And I wanna ask you today, what are you doing with it? Do I have per permission to be a little real with you today? I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. I'm just trying to be real and I'm trying to get you to think in a different way. Because the reality is I don't think that we are purposely neglecting our call. I just don't think we've given it a whole lot of thought. And I think that we come in here on Sunday morning and we have this mentality of like, how can I grow closer to God? And it's not a bad mentality to have. But for a lot of us, we can't even be inconvenienced to miss one worship song so that someone else can have an experience with Jesus. We can't be um, inconvenienced with serving one service and going to one service. We can't be inconvenienced with being here at 6.45 a.m. But church, I wanna tell you today that someone missed that worship song for you. That someone watched your kids so that you could have an encounter with Jesus. Some of you was there, somebody was there at 6.45 a.m. so that you could have an encounter with God. And they did that not for themselves. They did that for you. And so what would it look like if we began to, to walk in purpose and to shift our thinking and to desire to step into our calling, whatever it is. Now, I'm not saying that every single person in here is called to full-time ministry, because I don't believe that. But I do know for a fact that God has called you to something. And I wanna encourage you to venture out and to step into what that is. I wanna ask you this question. Is your relationship with him, with Jesus, more important than someone else's? Is your relationship with Jesus more important than someone else's? Now, I know we all know the answer to this. The reality is, everyone's relationship with Jesus is just as important as each other's. But we don't always walk in that. And I wanna challenge you to begin to shift how you think. Like, hey, I don't wanna wake up early. Hey, I don't wanna do this. I just wanna go in and I wanna have all four worship songs and hear them all. Because here's the reality. I've, and I'm just being honest with you and I don't say this to condemn anyone, but I've had people tell me, Ryan, I would serve, but then I would have to miss a worship song. And if that's your mentality, my hope and prayer is that the Lord will soften your hearts for others. Because that's what this word says right here that we are to love Jesus and that we are to love others. It doesn't say we're to love Jesus and love us and me. It says to love Jesus and to love others. Colossians 1.17 says this, he existed before anything was made and now everything finds completion in him. The second thing I wanna tell you today is that we are most connected to him when we model him. You are not complete until you fully hand over the keys to Jesus. I wanna share with you something as I was studying, something that just kind of rattled my brain a little bit. And I want you to know that I'm preaching to myself today as well because it's not always easy. There's Sundays I would rather just be down here worshiping and not have a, a care in the world and just focus on me for a second, but that's not my calling. That's not what Christ has for me. He's put me in a place to make sure that you have that experience. And from that overflow, he fills me up to overflowing. And so he gave me this perspective is that he was a God before the foundations of the earth where time was absent, time was not a thing. He was in eternity. But we couldn't make the mark, so Jesus stepped into time, stepped into humanity. And we have a God that loves us enough that he stepped down into a timeline, that stepped into a time. And he loved us enough to do that, but yet 
he is willing to step into time out of eternity, and we're not willing to give him any of our time. You can see how we need to shift that perspective. I read a statistic this week, and it sounds all right at first till I explain. It says that 45% of weekly attenders at churches in the U.S. serve, on average, once a month. So 45% of people that attend church every single week, on average, in the U.S., serve at the church once a month. But I also read a more current statistic that they also want us to realize that the average church attender in the U.S. nowadays, if we want to consider them a, a regular attender, they attend once every five weeks. And this statistic I just read you is for those that, re, that attend every week. So in perspective, out of everybody that attends in a five-week span, about 10% of those people serve and do 80% of the work in the church. And I'll tell you, that's right about where we're at here at this church. And once again, I'm not saying this to condemn anyone. I'm saying this to get you thinking because I really believe it wasn't out of selfishness. It was just, I haven't given it a thought. I haven't thought about it. This is just what I've always done. I accepted Jesus, I got baptized, now I come to church every Sunday and that's just what I do. And magically the worship's there, magically the sermon's put together, magically the chairs are all set up and we, we just come in there, we think that those things just happen um, by miraculous, divine appointment from God during the week. And the reality is I just want us to begin to shift our mind. Here's the thing, I don't wanna be average. I don't wanna be an average church in the US. I believe God has more for us than that. I believe he's called us to be way more than average. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says this, and it's out of the Amplified Bible, and I, I really like this interpre interpretation of this verse because it really, really gives a great perspective. It says this, he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart. A mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out or comprehend or even grasp what God has done. His overall plan from the beginning to the end. He has given us a divine purpose. And that divine purpose should be focused on eternity. Because here's the reality. For so many of us, myself included, we get so focused and so busy that all we think about is our 70, 80, 90 years if we're lucky here on earth. When even after we pass, this world is gonna keep on going and going and going. What would it look like if we shifted our perspective from this 70, 80, 90, 100 years and we began to have an internal mindset. And we began to, to think about eternity and, and what it is for people. Because the reality is we all know people that need Jesus. And so we need to shift our mentality. And we need to begin to care about that. Maybe you're in here today and you struggle with your calling. Maybe, in fact, the Lord has called you to something specific and you don't know whether you're supposed to do it or not, or you're scared, I want you to know, friend, that I was there. At 17 years old, I was at a Baptist youth camp in Glen Rose, Texas, and during an encounter in worship, the Lord told me, asked me, do you love me? And I said, yes. And he said, if you do, feed my sheep. And I knew right then that he had called me to what I'm doing right now. And you know what? It scared the crap out of me. I was like, I'm not gonna make any money. I'm gonna be poor my whole life. I, I'm not gonna uh, be able to wear cool clothes. I'm not gonna be able to have a cool car. I'm not gonna be able to have a nice house. What are people gonna think of me? I'm not gonna be able to have any fun. These are all things that are going through my 17 year old mind. And so I began to do things. The enemy began to use that against me. 
And I began to try to do things to disqualify myself like I ever could, right? And you know what? I did all of these things. I joined the military and, and served in the army for eight years. And I'm proud of that, but the reality was that was not my calling. I did that because I was lost and eager to fulfill my calling here on earth. And you know what I began to do? I began to go to EMT school. I began to go to medical assistant school. I did all my prerequisites. I wanted to be on care flight and do all these cool things. And I wanted to just help people, right? That's what I really wanted to do. I, geez, I wonder where that calling or that feeling that I needed to help people was coming from. But yet it wasn't enough. Because I knew that I was to help people spiritually, not physically. And so for over four years, I ran around trying to prove myself to the world and trying to fill this void that was inside. I knew that I had Jesus, but I knew that something was missing. And friend, I don't want you to have to feel that way any longer. Because God has given you a divine purpose, a unique reach, a unique influence in a skill set that only you have out of everybody in the world to reach people that nobody else can reach. Matthew 12, verses 46 through 50 says this. It says, while Jesus was talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. And someone told him, your mothers and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. And he replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? They probably thought Jesus was crazy in the moment. Then he pointed to his disciples and he said, here is my mother. Here are my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my, my brother and sister and mother. The fourth thing is this. When we do his will, we are in his when we do his will, we are in his. You are here for something other than yourself. So often when I'm studying and, and sermon prepping, you know, God likes to give me a gut punch while I'm studying. And he often does it through my marriage. And he pointed this out to me this week. You know, I'm gonna speak to the men for a second. When we get that desire, married men, when we get that desire to have our physical needs met, that's all we have on our mind, right? Right? And it doesn't matter how our wife feels about it in the moment. But we've got this one excuse of why this needs to happen. It needs to happen right now. And they're like, why are you so angry? And I'm like, I'm angry because of this. And I won't be, I promise you, if I get what I want. But then in reality, we haven't mowed the grass. We haven't taken the trash out. Or we haven't painted the room that she told us to paint. We haven't organized the garage. We haven't done anything on her honeydew list. And her love tank is on empty. But yet we have to have our needs fulfilled right there in that moment. But our marriage isn't about me. It's about we. And your relationship with Jesus is more than about you. Your relationship with Jesus is more than about you. Lives are at stake. People's eternity is at stake. And God needs you. Here's how I know he needs you. Because the second that you receive Jesus, he didn't zap you to heaven. Because you're gonna spend eternity in heaven with him now. No, he left you here. And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Last time I checked, that pits us third. But we like to reverse that order. We like to pit ourselves first, God second, and people third. That whole I am second bracelet campaign, that's a great idea. And it's a great principle for you to put God first in your life, but it's a little skewed because the reality is I am third. God is first, people are second, and I am third. And when you change that mentality, breakthrough begins to happen. Now I wanna read to you John chapter five, verses seven through eight, and I wanna read it to you, and then I'm gonna elaborate and I'm gonna explain. It says, sir, 
the invalid replied, or paralyzed person. I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And then Jesus said to him, get up and pick up your mat and walk. The fifth and last point is this. Get up and go to him and bring people with you. I want to give you some background of what's going on here at this pool. I believe that there was hundreds of people around this pool. Now, this guy right here, he was paralyzed. But there was deaf people around this pool. There was mute people around this pool. There was people with leprosy around this pool. There was uh, development delayed. Anything that you could think of, there was people with all kinds of handicaps or problems that were there waiting for a miracle to be healed here at this place. Now, every so often, God would sit down some of heaven's army down there and people would get healed if you got in the pool in time. So you can imagine the rush of these people trying to get in this place. Now, with that background, I want to read this to you again because I think it's going to give you new perspective of what's going on here. It says, Sir, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. I'm sitting here, I'm waiting for God to show up and these people keep getting their breakthrough and I'm not getting mine, so I'm not happy about it. How dare them get their breakthrough and me not get my breakthrough? How dare them get that healing? How dare God provide for them and not provide for me? Am I the only one that's ever had that mentality? Am I the only one that's ever looked on Facebook when we were struggling to have a child and see somebody else that was pregnant and be upset about it with God? This is what's going on with this man right here. He's like, look at the cards you've dealt me. I'm waiting for you to show up. I'm sitting here. I'm trying to beat everybody else to you, uh, but they keep beating me. Now I'm not okay with this. Why is this happening, Jesus? Then Jesus says something profound. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. His mentality was that they keep blocking my breakthrough. And Jesus is telling this guy, while you are waiting for God to come down, God is waiting for you to get up. He's right there. Now you can sit here and you can wait. You might get a little glimpse of me. But you must have heard by now that I've been going reaping havoc all through these communities and you know that I'm there, but you've done nothing but sit here and wait for God to come to you instead of pursuing God in the flesh that's right there with you. Breakthrough happens when we stop sitting on our butt and hoping God does something and getting up and following him and leading others with us. Imagine when he encountered God, if he just screamed and told them in excitement what just had happened. I believe hundreds of people would have got healed. And they wouldn't be just sitting around waiting for God to show up. They would be going around and doing breakthrough and doing ministry with God in the flesh that was right there with them. Church, some of you say, I'm just waiting and praying for God to give me that calling. For him to speak it to me, then I'll do something. I believe that this gospel is the complete opposite of this. Because when Jesus went to the disciples, he didn't tell them to pray about it. He said, get up, come on, let's go. And I believe the same thing is for you. And that when you start doing that, you will discover your purpose. You will discover what God has called you to. I want to read to you 2 Timothy 1.9. Once again, it says he has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Here's the thing, church. Breakthrough begins when our excuses end. Breakthrough begins when our excuses end. Here's what I need you to realize today, church, is that you are someone's breakthrough. 
You are, through Christ Jesus, appointed, anointed, called, graced, saved, purposed. He's given you a uniqueness that nobody else has but you. And God wants you to use you to be somebody's breakthrough through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I wanna ask you today, church, what are you waiting for? Here's the thing. We have a huge vision in this house and we can't do it alone. We need you on the team. No position is over the other. I would love for this church to be well above average. I would love us to have such a problem that everybody in this church is serving and we're having to create positions and we're having to tell you, hey, we can only have you serve once or twice a month instead of having the same volunteers serving week in and week out. We're like, we're having to schedule this out because our whole church wants a piece of what God is doing and wants to be a part of it. God has given you a divine purpose from the foundations of the earth before he knew you, before you knew him. Will you step into it? Breakthrough for you, breakthrough for this community, for families to be healed, for relationships to be restored, for bondage and addictions to be broken, for hearts and hurts to be healed. Will you allow God to use you to bring divine appointment to others? I want to remind you that breakthrough is an act or instance of moving through or beyond an obstacle. I believe breakthrough will happen. I'll close with this. I believe breakthrough will happen when we stop thinking about how we can get ours and begin to help others get theirs. I believe breakthrough will happen when we take the focus off of ourself and we shift our mindset, church, we need you. This community, this city, your area of influence, your boss, your coworkers, your family, they need you. And you are called, you're saved, you're graced, and you're purposed. And God needs you on the team. We need you on the team. We're stronger with you than without you. If you would bow your heads, let me pray for you today. For those of you in here, maybe you say today, man, I haven't really thought about it, if I'm honest. I haven't thought about it from that perspective. I just grew up thinking like, hey, going to church is what you do. That's how you strengthen your relationship." but I want to encourage you today that there's a powerful transaction that takes place when you flip the script on that. And you say, what can I do to be a blessing to others? What can I do for someone else to reach Jesus? What can I do to be a part of the team? What can I do so someone has a breakthrough? Even though I'm not getting mine, what can I do to be a part of someone experiencing God in a supernatural, profound, amazing way and be okay with the fact that your breakthrough hasn't happened yet? If you're in here today, I just want to pray for you. You say, hey, I just need to shift the way I think. I want to have more of an eternal perspective. I want to begin to search out serving. I want to, in, I want to just search out my calling. If that's you today, will you just raise your hand? I just want to pray for you. You say, I want to figure out my calling. I want to figure out my purpose. I want to be used by God. I want to be anointed. And I want to be used in a powerful way. Lord Jesus, I thank you for everybody here. I believe that you're gonna do amazing things with this church right here, Lord. And I pray that we would walk in the mindset of how we can bless others and serve you, Lord. I pray for a special anointing and that you would reveal everybody's calling and purpose. It's in Jesus' name.